Hey guys, it is Tuesday. Normally I would be at work. Normally I would be in the clinic. And normally I probably would have started my weekly vlog before today. But uh, welcome to the beginning of a new crafty week. I am off today. I just got back from the dentist. Um, so half my mouth is numb. I wanted to show you this little chicken I finished last night. I had a terrible night's sleep a night before last. So last night I was like, I'm going to focus and make this chicken and keep myself awake so I can have a decent night's sleep. Because what happens is I'm really tired and then I fall asleep early and then, of course, I wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. So it worked. I stayed up. I finished this at about 8.30, 9 o'clock last night. This was a really quick make. This is the tiny chicken uh, from Crafts Go Bloom. And I got it done last night. I used, this is one of those Bernat blankets that come in the cake. I think it's a Marl's. And you can't tell here. But maybe in another clip you'll be able to see the color change in this. And it's the same uh, Hobby Lobby yarn that I used on the other chicken, as well as the Juicy Couture that I used for the comb. I really like this little chicken. This one is small. That yarn, uh, even though it's classified, it's a Bernat blanket, it's classified the same way as all the rest. It's just softer and thinner, and the makeup of it, the way it's made up, uh, it, it does knit up or crochet up smaller. I think I could have put the eyes. Well, let me stop. Oh, there you go. There you go. Linda Jane. I heard you. I heard you, Linda Jane. Okay. All right. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Crafts Go Bloom today came out with her next bird, which is a turkey. So, uh, yep, I'll link her video down below. By the time this comes out, though, you probably would have already seen it. Anyway, so cute. I like how she does the comb. All right, guys, um, the feeling's going to come back, and I am probably going to be sore. I it, it, it was a It's a root canal, so there's no nerve in my tooth, so that won't hurt, but the gums all around it will probably be sore um, when the feeling all comes back. So today, I'm just going to crochet, rest, recover, and watch Christmas movies. Okay, bye. All right, gang, um, you can see I just have a little bit of swelling right there. And that's just because that's where they worked on it at. And it's the tiniest bit painful. Um, just a little soreness. It's, I can't really chew over there. Um, but uh, I think I found out about this little free bee on um melly inspired crochet uh she does all these really cool series um and mo a lot of times she will show a lot of different free patterns on insta and you know what's nice about that is that she works them up and if there are kinks she will let you know but she did a keychain um series recently and i think like um under 30 minute series or something like that now i'm a slow crocheter there's not anything that takes me 30 minutes i don't care if it takes the whole world 30 minutes for me it takes longer but anyway this is one of the patterns i found out about from her and it's a little bit hold on a second so i got this one done and you look like my little bobbles on this one are a little bit better i still need to like zhuzh them a little bit but here is the little b i used i think the pattern called for 12 millimeter safety eyes but i'm super lazy so i'm only using whatever's here on the couch with me so i have 15 millimeter and 
here they are here it is let me show you the wings this is mostly the black and the white are Bernat blanket the white is baby blanket and then uh the the mustardy color is that um yarn from um, hobby lobby that i showed you guys i used it for the uh chicken feet and beak on um my on all of my chickens so far all of my tiny chickens from crafts go boom and i think i already mentioned it but she just came out with a turkey pattern today which i'm gonna try to do uh anyway i just wanted to show you the bee real quick all done i'm gonna make some more i'm gonna try to make at least two more of these they are quite fun quite quick and quite easy okay Real quick, guys, let me show you what I did on my day off um, when I was uh, home for from the, I went to the dentist yesterday. I already did a clip, y'all already know. So, let's see what I was able to accomplish. So, I made one B. I think this was actually the first one, too. That's one. Here is B number two. <laughs> With the wings. And then we have B number three. Alright, so I made three Bs. And then I had already shown you guys that I had made this guy. Okay, and then I made this one. So this is the same marled yarn. Uh, it is one of those blanket yarn cakes and it's marled. So this one, um, you could see, but, but what I did was I had some of that, um, Dollar Tree had some of that like fun fur yarn I, i'm never able to find yarn at dollar tree and when i do it's weird <laughs> i shouldn't call it weird it's textured and i'll show you a label later but uh, i had pulled these out thinking i was gonna make you know a, a, a scrunchies or something or i was gonna try to make a fluffy i mean grooming but I decided to hold it together, hold it together with, hold it double with the Bernat blanket. So it gave it just a little more fluff. I don't think you could tell very much of a difference on camera. You can't, because this one doesn't have the fluff. And these lint rolled. And this one does have the fluff. The other thing is I used... I think a size eye hook with this one and this I used a the L hook or the nine millimeter hook so of course it's bigger but I really love the effect of holding those two yarns together I don't, can you see the fuzz and because this is pretty fuzzy as it is but anyway there that is those two are so finish that one and then finally I said well let me make a Mabel chicken I was trying to stay up last night because we had a, a potluck at work and I made um butternut squash soup and it turned out so good it was such a hit and I have some that I'm getting ready to go in here and heat up but I went ahead and made a Mabel chicken and I also, I don't think you can tell out here in the car, but I also held this together with the fluffy yarn. I'll show you the two yarns later. Uh, and made this Mabel chicken. This is the same marled yarn. It's just that now we're down to kind of like the white section, the lightest part. So you can see on this chicken, I had got down to it. I started getting into the white section. And this is almost fully that color held together with this grayish, almost like a fun fur type of yarn. And so there you go. Now, this one, I changed the comb on this because 
I want it to be a little bit more substantial. So I, it's kind of like a hybrid between the tiny chicken comb and the original comb from the um, Mabel chicken. Anyway, there you go. Those are my items from yesterday. Talk back soon. Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to show you if I don't know if you can see. I'll try to maybe take a clip outside, but I thought I would try to see if you could see that fuzziness that exists on this. So here's what it is. It is um, this. It's Just Yarn Plush. This is like either I find regular acrylic or something like this at my Dollar Tree. It's actually, yeah. Never any of the just chenille. It's probably just gone. Um, but anyway, uh, and even when it was first out, I didn't find just chenille at my um, at my Dollar Tree. Sorry, I think uh, my son came out the bathroom. I'm trying to block him. <laughs> anyway, uh. <laughs> So this is just yarn plush. And what I did was I had that cake of the Burnett blanket in. Hold on one second. So I had one of these cakes. And you can see the darker colors of it was on the outside. We've gone to the lighter colors. And it's going to get a little bit darker on the inside. And uh, I just held the two together for that. So next up, I'm going to attempt to make a cow with the rest of this to use it up and to just hold it together. Um, and I'm going to do the same with this. Like so, so that's just a little tip and trick. If you have some of this yarn and you don't quite know what to do with it, uh, it's fairly thin and you can just hold it together. You know, see, that's it on its own. It's not that thick. <laughs> they probably classify it as something like a four. It is. It's classified as a four. But it's not really a four. They just do that because of the fluff. And this is kind of like, you know how Rel from the Dabbling Hook. Hi, Rel. Uh, she always lattes things. So it would be fairly similar to latteing something. And you would end up getting something with a little more fuzziness and softness so i want to try and take a clip of the chicken outside so you can really hopefully see the fluff in the sunlight okay hold on okay now you guys can see that fluff a little bit that is what i'm talking about it gives it kind of a feathery look right holding it together See the fluff? There you go. And here it is on this chicken. You can really see it because this chicken is a darker color. It's more contrast with the um, Just Yarn Plush. But there you go. There's the fluffiness I'm talking about. Good morning, everybody. I am uh, on my way to the Southern California fiber fest and hopefully i'll get some footage but i'm meeting up with some of our great friends um and hopefully we'll get a little footage and share our experience with you okay i got a little bit of a drive ahead of me so i'll see you soon
to the most popular Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Have you, did, did you know there's a game for it? No. I designed a board game for this so that when you make one, you can play actually board games with your kids or grandkids or whatever. Yeah. I love your hair, by the way. When mine gets that long, it starts getting big like that. I'm just telling my fiance all about it. I know, she said, I, I was literally we just talking about that last night. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's take a picture. I want to take a picture. Oh, yeah. Hey everybody, it's Kim the Crafty Nomad and I keep doing that. <laughs> anyway, I am back to wrap up this weekly vlog with a very exciting, uh, fun uh, event that I went to today. It was the Southern California Fiber Fest, which we are all hoping upon hope will become our Rhinebeck. Anyway, it was a fantastic event super fun i'll show you some clips either i've already shown you i'll show you them afterwards we'll see but i wanted to show you some of the things i was able to get hold on one second all right so it was the southern california fiber fair um let's see it was held in pomona california and as you will see i met up with some our some of our good friends and had a wonderful time i was able to hang out with pam from pamela's crochet and knit corner she is the one who likes pink things she loves ladybugs and she is the crocheter who knits a bit her channel will be linked down below i got to meet her husband i got to meet her sister and uh we just had a great time this is actually a two-day event we uh only are going we went today and that's going to be it for me which was great um but anyway yeah it, it was a fabulous fabulous time so uh when you registered you got a chance to uh purchase the merch when you register so it was like $15 to get in plus some more money if you wanted the bag which of course I got the bag and let me show you it so we have the bag from the inaugural what we hope will be the inaugural SoCal Fiber Fest and with that came a cute little uh enamel pen which i don't know if that's gonna help but i'm gonna do that because that's what the real podcasters do um it is their official enamel pen and guess what it is a granny square i think that's fantastic guys you know if you've been around a long time and you have seen people go to these different fiber fests, I know Claudia uh, from, uh, oh goodness, I can't remember her channel name. Uh, why can't I remember right now? Anyway, we are constantly on the lookout for, uh, I'm trying to open this bag nicely, but it's not working. Um, we're on the lookout for crochet, you know, things that sort of bring out crochet. And it usually is pretty hard to find. But at this festival, there were so many people with crochet samples in their booths that it was pretty amazing to see. All right, so that's what the bag looks like. So uh, there were lots of vendors. Um, if you can just have a quick look. All of that at the bottom is the vendors. This is a list of vendors. And um, there was an opportunity so when we get there uh we pick up we we pick up our bags that was right at the front our bags and our pens we got our wristbands and we went on in but pam had had told me the night before uh, when we were trying to organize ourselves uh, about how to you know how we were going to meet up uh she informed me that warm up america was going to be there now they are a charity 
and they apparently uh, collect squares and blankets and hats and scarves, and they distribute them distribute them throughout the country to different organizations. Well, they were going to be there, and they were going to be accepting donations. So I got a chance to take in a bag of uh, hats, bunches of hats, some cowls and scarves, as well as uh, a blanket. So that was exciting. Then we just, you know, we started walking around. So uh, we met up with Vicky, who stayed with us for about the half the time we were there. Uh, in addition, we did get to see Z and um, met some people, Pam, some of her subscribers uh, recognized her, which was really cool. So uh, yeah. It was a great, great time. Um, you'll see the footage. Let me show you what I got. So the first thing I wanted to go to, I knew from, because I follow her on Instagram, that Seismic Yarn was going to be there. And therefore, I got uh, Seismic Yarn and Dye Works. Uh, from, she is in Daly City, San Francisco, California. And I got this on her. This is her Seismic Butter Sock DK. And it is um, merino and nylon. I think it's 85% um, uh, superwash merino, 15% nylon. And this color is called We Will Rock You. And I just wish you could see the speckles really well on this. But she's amazing. And this yarn is super soft. And I think I'm probably going to make myself some sort of a beanie with it that I could wear in Chicago. Because y'all know I'm not wearing no beanies in Southern California. But anyway, <laughs> there you go for that. And then we ran. Well, that was probably one of the last things I bought. Uh, we ran into the, to, we saw the booth for Buku Yarns. This is actually Pam Pam's local yarn shop, so it's right in the area. And we bought a few things. We got some stitch stoppers. I got the sushi. I got uh, the peppermint latte. Not that I do that much knitting, but these are so cute. And then I got some cute little sheep. In addition, I got the um, stitch holder cords for when I finally make that knitted sweater. Got those. Okay. So I got all of that. Then, what else did we get? One of the things I really wanted was a piece of pottery. Um, I really, really want to one day have some stuff from Jenny the Potter. I think I'm assuming she's still doing her thing. Um, but there were two different um, pottery uh, folks there. And I ended up getting this one. What I ended up getting is from uh, Pine Cone Ceramics and Crafts. And her name is Patricia. And here's her her card. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know if that makes a difference. But there you go. And I got a teacup. And this is what this is her work. What I like about it is this where you hang the the strings from your tea bag there so i can't wait to use it i might even make myself something toasty to drink tonight just so i can use this so i got that i gotta find a place to put it that it doesn't so it doesn't break so i think that's everything that's currently in the bag then guys Whitney Marie Anderson was there, guys, and I just grabbed, uh, so here's Whitney Marie's card. She does a lot of things with uh, polymer clay. She makes crochet hooks. She makes uh, stitch markers. And... I got another one of these little girls, guys. I think these little girls are so cute. 
And I hope that I can do her justice and show her to you. Look at how cute she is. With her little afro puffs. So I got that little special stitch marker, which I need to find a really good place for it so I don't lose it, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. Okay. So that's Whitney Marie. Uh, I'm going to see if I can... Let me put up her, her QR code. In case you want to scan it. So that was really cool. Then we, we got to the point where, oh, from Seismic Yarn, I also got this. I can't adult today, it says. Very cute, right? So I got that. Then, um... We were hungry. We were like, okay, you know, I had eaten breakfast, but that was it. And we, by the time we, I, we had walked around for several hours, it was a little bit past lunchtime. We were starving. Pam hadn't even eaten breakfast. So we went out to the food trucks, got something to eat, and then we went. After we fed ourselves, then we actually went around again to see if there was anything else we wanted. That's when I bought the seismic yarn. And really, uh, I was... You know, I was going to be satisfied with my one hank of yarn, my enamel pin, my stitch stoppers, and those types of things. And then we went right past this booth that we had shopped at earlier. I hadn't bought anything. Um, I looked around. I didn't buy anything. But Pam had found this really pretty uh, ceramic um yarn that was so gorgeous and the lady had some samples knit up in it and it just she had done color work and she had done one of the colors as the metallic yarn which i thought was pretty amazing so we we're just walking around we had already been there and then when we came back i just looked over there and i saw i was like i had been wondering while the first time we were there why was everything so um affordable i mean it was wool yarns and they really were less than you know ten dollars a hank some of them were um they weren't big hanks but they were less than ten dollars a hank and uh they were solid colors it was her brand and all of that and the brand was um what does it say on here oh yeah Ikige Fiber. Ikige Fiber. Okay. Anyway. So we looked, and so when we were walking back, and this is toward the end, I looked down, and I was like, I looked again, and I looked again, and this woman was selling some really beautiful yarns for some really decent prices so i got these where's my other oh so i got these two i got a few hanks this is where my entire haul uh -oh, came from for the most part so i got two of these uh cascade baby alpaca chunky and this one is in the colorway. I don't know. It's 108 yards. Yeah, I'll probably make a hat out of this one first. 100% baby alpaca. And I do not know what this colorway is. The color number. So the color number is 570. So I got that beautiful Hank. Of chunky yarn it is the softest this baby alpaca is super uber uber soft so of course i got a second one and this colorway is colorway six three eight and it is a like this one is a blue light blue and this one is a gray and i just love them so i got those two i think and then i got some madeline tosh guys uh malintosh hand dye yarns this one is tosh sport it's a hundred percent super wash merino wool and you get 270 
yards of sport weight yarn. And this colorway here, I got two of these in the colorway Earl Grey. And then I got two additional Madeline Tosh, um, what is that? Tosh Sport. This colorway is called Well Water. And it is the same, I think. Yeah, 270 yards of sport weight. These are, oh no, actually these are different. That one is well water, and you can tell better in the camera. This one is called denim. So I could, in real life, I wasn't seeing the dis difference, but as soon as I hold it up to the camera, you can tell that they are different. So I got those two. I think I got one more. And then I got this last hank of Malin Tosh. Again, Tosh. Oh, this one is Tosh DK. And the colorway is Hearth. You get 225 yards of this DK weight yarn. It's a pretty fall color. I have a... Oh, what's that other one? I have another brand of yarn in a color like this that I can probably use together. Anyway, I didn't want any fingering weight. I just went for um, DK or Sport or Chunky. <laughs> So, guys, when I tell you that these hanks of yarn were so affordable that I just couldn't believe it. And I, you know, I asked the lady, I was like, um, are you, like, closing your store or something like that? And she was like, no. But what happened is that she was really just trying to clear out her craft room. And she used to sell kits at her studio. She used to sell kits and she's no longer selling the kits. And a lot of this yarn was in the kits for her patterns. Now, let me show you one of her patterns. This was one of the hats that was on the table. And I was like, where do you find the pattern? And it is called the uh, Paca hat by Incot. Uh, Ikigai Ikige? I don't know, fiber. I should have asked her how to pronounce it. Let me show you. So here's the hat. When I asked her where could I find the pattern, she gave me this card. And she, the, she tell, it tells you where to find it. And tells you what you need and then how to get the pattern. Um, it is um, there at On Ravelry and it's called the Paca Hat. I can't wait to try that. I, I really want to try some color work. Again, you know, I tried a little bit of color work. I didn't do anything intense, but I really do. The results are so beautiful, so I would love to master that. I think uh, that's going to be it. That's going to be all, except I must show you that I received a gift from Pam. One, she gave me um, one of her beautiful uh wine bottle holders i want to find this pattern because i've got some silver uh some gray yarn with silver in it i think this is so cool uh if you are going to like an event during the holiday season and you're bringing even if you're not bringing actual alcohol you could be bringing martinelli's you know um sparkling cider or sparkling grape juice you can still put that right here or you can put a bottle of two bucks chuck or you can put a bottle of bon perion i don't know <laughs> anyway uh, uh she gifted me one of these and i really appreciate it and then she like gave me some beautiful fabric um let me show y'all this fabric so like you can see who's on it it's actually popeye on a motorcycle all right, so I think that's it. That's everything. This is long enough. It's now time for me to go into full prep mode for this upcoming um, Small Business Saturday vendor event. I'm very excited about it. I will take you along. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy some of the clips that I have shown you or that I will show right now. Um, 
I will sign off until we meet again. Let's keep it crafty, guys.